Okay, game two of my match against Mac Attack here. Um, I think I want to get thin, so I'm going to open research. Uh, maybe research Secret Cave, try to pop off the magic lamp fairly quickly. Secret Cave doesn't seem to have a lot of synergies here. Um, you kind of want to be able to draw up, so... Um, with Secret Cave, and there's no draw to X-type cards here. Um, both Secret Cave and Research are nice at being able to hit 6, which you kind of want to get a gold um, in order to be able to keep the encampments around, and that seems to me like the best thing to do in this kingdom is to keep the encampments around. I'm going to have 4 here. They've got 5. I assume they're going to get a count, most likely. We'll see. Yeah, I see no reason not to trigger this. Five. Yeah, I mean, I think I can get a count. I can maybe already get a paddock. Um, I'm going to be fine on actions. And that gives me horses that let me draw. Uh, now the count seems like the best thing to do. I want to be able to trash. going to have seven here. Um, and probably just get the gold. So they've got their big turn with research coming in. Uh, my research, I think, is down in my last two cards. So we'll play that next turn. Um, I think the plan is just top deck silver, trash hand. Get along on the trashing. Um, we've both trashed one estate, so... We're about equal, but if I can get ahead here. Um, although they're seeing most of their hands, so most of their deck, so I assume they're going to be able to trash here as well. Tower is not like hugely important, but I assume we will empty the encampment pile. Um, it is also possible we empty the paddock pile. Um, paddocks become really good once the, the pile is empty, and the encampment pile I think will empty fairly quickly once our decks get online. They discarded two cards for money. I don't like that. I definitely would have just tried to get a big, big old trash off there. Top deck is silver, trash hand. I'm perfectly willing to give up a whole turn, you know, multiple turns even, in order to get get that going. Um, so I've got seven here, or some combination of six, five, four, three, some combination of stuff that I want to do. Um, we'll have to see if I want to, um, if I want to get that from. We'll have to see if I want to do some 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 weird stuff with with piles, uh, with with uh, researching silver or something. So they got a village green. Um, there's not a lot of discard synergy here. There's some with secret cave. I don't know that I want to be doing a ton of secret cave stuff. Um, so with five, I'm considering Villa, I'm considering my two buys, Villa Encampment, and, um, Paddock as my two buys. Um, I think I'm going to do this where I set aside with the silver. Um, this is Copper Estate Countersides. I'm going to be able to get a real nice trash off next turn. Um, and I should be able to pop off my Magic Lamp next turn as well. Um, if I can draw it... It's not guaranteed that I will draw it. Um, it could be the top card of my deck, in which case I'll draw it. It could also be an encampment on top. Um, so I think there's a one and uh, two and three chance that I can draw it. Mac attack plays their counts. So I assume I assume they should be trashing here. If you can get ahead, then deck building you can take the flag bear. Um, there's also some logic to take the flag bear in terms of having another unique card um, for getting the secret. Um, the lamp, um, the magic lamp um, popped. When you say pop, if you're not familiar with that terminology, um, you can trash this to gain three wishes, and wishes are very powerful cards. Um, so you want to do that as almost as soon as possible in almost every kingdom that I've ever played. Play the secret cave. Okay, so I'm going to be able to pop here, so I'm not going to trash... The encampment is on top, which is nice. 
Um, so, uh, can I top deck the gold? Top deck the gold, get plus three coins, play a copper, play a magic lamp to get my wishes, and then gain two encampments. That seems awesome. And now I can use my wishes to gain more encampments or plunders. Um, I kind of expect them to now take encampments because they're afraid that I'm going to get them all. Um, and if that's the case, then I'll be able to wish for plunder. Um, if they don't take the encampments, I can even wish for encampments. I'm perfectly fine with the encampment split. Um, although, you know, as I think about it, Paddock will provide pretty nice draw um, with, um, with this kingdom. Um, because this, I'm going to empty, you know, between us, we're going to empty this pile. If, if they don't empty it, I'm going to empty it myself. Um, as I like that pile quite a bit. Um, so we'll see what they decide to do. Okay, um, this is a bit, like, a bit annoying for me. I'm not quite sure what to do with these wishes. I don't really like wishing for um, encampment. It feels like a waste of a wish. Um, then again, there's there's not really good draw cards. So I guess I'll wish for one encampment. Um, get the turn going along a little bit and see what happens. Okay. So I can research this estate. I also wish for like Villa to give me more buys or wish for Festival. Maybe that's the best thing. Festival is a nicer card than Villa here. Um, that seems reasonable. Um, I do still need to get a trash off somehow, but I think I can I can find different ways to do that. Um, Festival is going to be a nicer long-term card than Villa. I can also research Villas at some point or, or count them away if I don't, don't care about that, them that much. Um, it feels like over a waste of a turn to just buy an encampment and a plunder, but I think that's the plan, and I'm going to stick with that. Um, here I'll be able to wish for a wish for a plunder unless they somehow gain four, which is not possible with their deck. Um, and I expect them to get wishes as well. Um, ideally, I think in this kingdom, wishing for plunders is the best thing. Um, you can also wish for a gold if need be. So if I can get the plunders down to zero before they're able to wish for them, um, that's really nice for me. I also have the count, so I'm going to be looking to try to trash a bunch of coppers this turn. The one turn where I discarded with Secret Cave to pop the Magic Lamp is sort of the example when you don't want to trash with count. Um, if, if we didn't have Magic Lamp in this kingdom, um, or I couldn't activate it that turn, I would have trashed four cards and been a lot thinner. But obviously the three wishes accelerate my deck so much that I'm pretty happy to have those. Yeah, so they're, they're now looking at it like, nuts, I can't activate those things. Um, so they took the Flag Bearer first, which is um, reasonable. Um, if they're trying to catch up, but the thing is that my deck is a little bit better, so I'm going to be able to, um, I'm going to be able to active, I'm going to be able to take it all the time. Okay, play the last encampment. So the question is, do I want to trash here or not? I can discard stuff, um, with the secret cave. I can discard my three treasures and then trash all the coppers and claim that. Um, my deck is so much better and thin, and then I'll be able to buy two plunders next turn. Just start adding paddocks. Alternative is my deck is already good enough that I don't really need to trash these coppers, and I can happily, you know, trash one at a time with research or something and and, and build. But I, I think I need, I, I do want some amount of consistency. Um, so I will gain a copper trash hand. Um, and a secret cave better than nothing? I'm not, it's not immediately obvious to me that secret cave is better than nothing. Better than like a silver? It's probably better than a, I think silver is probably better than nothing. 
the reason it wouldn't be better is because sometimes I'm going to have to play encampments without knowing if I have without having a plunder or gold in hand, and then I might be worried about. And so then I want to have as many plunders and golds in my deck as possible. And if I play the encampment and draw a silver, then then I could end up having to return my encampment to the pile, and my advantage is, is lessened a little bit. Um, as it is, I've thinned um, significantly more, so I'm going to be able to have bigger turns and sort of spiral things from here. Okay, they went for province, which seems extremely early to me. So I can play count here, do something like discard the research. Oops, I want to top deck it. Top deck the research is what I wanted. Um, thank you. Uh, top deck the research. Because now I can, for plus three coins, draw with the encampment, festival, kill this copper, and play all treasures. So that's 18 and three buys. So um, I kind of want to get two paddocks and a plunder. Um, I can also get a free villa. I think the free villa is worth it. And then I want two plunders or two paddocks? I think I want two paddocks. Um, well, the paddocks aren't terminal yet, but I have plenty of actions with encampment. Um, and they'll be able to start seeding horses into the deck. Um, the logical effect of a paddock, it's a little bit confusing, but essentially it is a laboratory that gives you plus two money if one of the piles is empty. So it's essentially plus two cards, plus two money, um, and then plus one action per pile empty. Um, the logic there is a little bit confusing, but that's what it works out to be. Um, and essentially, if, if I can make it into a laboratory that gives me plus two money, then that's an amazing card. Um, Grand Market is less than that, although it does give you a buy, but it's only plus one card, and that's worth six, and it's really hard to buy. So a paddock, activated paddock, can be really good, um, but the draw is delayed till next turn, essentially, because I can't really play the horses until next turn. Not quite sure what they're going for with buying that estate. Okay, what do I have down there? Um, some random stuff. I don't really need this count anymore, I don't think. So, play all treasures. Yes, yeah, so the thing here is. I just have a ton of VP from these plunders. I think I'm just going to get the last two plunders. Do I want to get the flag bearer? I think I'm just going to get the last two plunders and start my turn with, with a huge hand, a bunch of horses. Um, and I'm now ahead due to the tower points, even. So basically, my plan every turn will be to. Play all the encampments, play all the paddocks, play just a couple of the horses, as need be, and um, lower the paddock pile. If they gain a bunch of provinces really quickly, I can switch to provinces, but I don't see a huge need for me to do that. Um, I'll also pick up fleet at some point. Um, fleet is nice for um, giving me that extra turn if for some reason we get really, really close in the end game. although I feel like I'm pretty, pretty solidly ahead here and won't come up. Um, fleet is one of those cards where you look at it and you'd be like, oh, that'll be useful to have, and then you just never find time for it, and the game ends and your opponent gets an extra free turn. They've been able to make the Secret Cave Village Green Synergy work here, which is nice, but it's a delayed plus three coins, and, um, you know, Paddock gives me two coins now, and draw. So it's not clear to me that the, the, the Secret Kid Village Green is doing a lot more than spinning. Um, probably that last turn was, I think, a little bit of an aberration. I added a couple of paddocks, and they don't draw till a turn after, and then I missed out on uh, an encampment. Um, I don't think I would have been able to draw deck anyways, but 
I should be able to draw a deck now um, for the foreseeable future and hopefully start banking up extra horses just in case I need them. Um, and this turn I'll probably pick up a flag bearer. They got their lamp. So it's turn 12. Unfortunately, the, the set of things they want. Um, I guess they can get three duchies, which is not nothing. So that's, you know, a bunch of VP that they can get. Horse. Horse. Villa. Encampment. So what can I do? I can seed my shuffle here. So I can play Paddock. I think there was probably a better way I can do this, but yeah, there's definitely a better way I could have done this, but now I have three horses at the top of my shuffle, and I'm saving horses between last turn and this turn. Okay, so 23. Um, so they do have the ability to gain three duchies in a turn, but it completely wrecks their deck, um, and we're not that close to piling. So... Like, it doesn't seem crazy to me to go something like Festival, Paddock, Paddock, Flagbearer. That's 19. Um, I could even go Villa, Paddock, Paddock, Flagbearer, Fleet. Villa, Actions. I could even have gained those Paddocks and played them, um, I realize. And I can consider doing that next turn. Fleet. So I'm going to be starting now every turn with a bunch of horses on top of the deck. And I'm saving horses, so my deck's going to look more and more horses. Um, I can then do something like buy some paddocks, then buy a villa, play the horses to play more paddocks. Um, it's not like a, a, a loop that gains that, that is self-sustaining, but I can do one or two rounds of it if need be to add a little bit more payload to go for a pile out. Um, and that could be what I'm looking to do here, is just pile out the paddocks and the villas. I guess it's worth noting, paddocks cost 30, villas cost 24, if that's 54. Provinces cost 6 times 8, 48. So it's not like I'm gaining a ton of value there. Um, but it feels a safe line, because they've got, you know, essentially 4 or 5 gains total, um, and only one of those really in the turn can be a province. They've still got the count, so that's that's something that they've got going for them. In that they can play the count to gain a duchy on the last turn. So I just need to be a little bit careful about that. Uh, horse. Festival. Horse. Okay. Um, I still have the flag bearer. Something I consider doing is researching the flat, like playing four paddocks. Um, researching the flag bearer. Flag bearer is still worth points to me, so I'm not going to do that. I can't research a silver, though. Um, so now I have five horses at the top of my deck and three research to side. Uh, and I can start to figure out um, if I'm real close to piles. Um, I need nine more money, and then I can buy, a lot, buy out all the provinces. So it doesn't seem crazy to me to buy six paddocks here. Um, well, maybe that's crazy. Um, to buy like a province and um, I start my hand with eight horses. So I'm drawing 16 cards. Uh, so in that 16 cards, you're seeing six, 10, 11, 12, 15, 21, 21 cards here. So I'm drawing 16 of those unless all five of the encampments are at the bottom. I'm able to draw through. Um, so I think I'm just going to go province and four paddocks. Um, and feel fairly good about it. Um, that was maybe thinking a little bit too much about it. I think I'm ahead enough that it doesn't matter. Um, but my opponent's been pretty pretty deliberate in planning out their turn, so I'm okay taking a little bit of time there. Um, just making sure I don't don't leave something silly or set myself up to fail. Um, you know, if I bought like five duchies there or something, <laughs> it's possible that I add a lot of bad cards to my deck, but I feel pretty pretty, pretty solid here. Um, I can actually end the game next turn on buying out the paddocks and the villas if I really wanted to, um, or just buy out the provinces. Um, even if they somehow get a pile out, I have this extra fleet turn, so they've got to spend a buy getting fleet. 
And then again, you click on the horses until you find a gold, then you click on the encampments while you have those. Let's draw through, play all the cards. Villa, horse, horse. Play the paddocks. Trigger a shuffle containing all my good cards and actions, play all treasures, and I can just buy four provinces here. And turn, and end actions, fleet turn.